And now for the weirdest Japanese game you've never heard of. Go for it, Jujie! I'm Scott, and I'm Simeon. Let's talk about Poles Big Adventure, a WiiWare game by Sega, released only in Japan. A game we've always tried to remember. But we've never known until now. But we've never remembered. <laughs> it was featured in Nintendo Power. Yeah. Uh, before its release, there's like I remember this was like right after like Mega Man Nine was announced. Yeah. And other stuff like that. Two thousand nine. We were was big. And it sounded really really cool. Like, oh, there's this game with it's really funny and it has lots of jokes in it and it makes fun of old games. And we're like, yep. When can we play this game? Yeah, so 8 or 16-bit, and probably 16-bit because it's Sega. But side-scrolling, 2D, platformer, looks like a, really a spoof on Mario. Mm-hmm. And I would love more spoof games. Yeah, there needs to be more spoof games. Spoof movies are good. Spoof YouTube videos are good. Did you ever watch low-budget trailers like I asked you to? I don't think I did. Oh, you failed. Oh, man. Tweet. I did will. Did you tweet? I will. It's okay if we're a minute into it, you know? Yeah. You know, yeah, they'll still catch up. Isn't spoof hum- hu- humor? Spoof humor is very spoof good. Spoof humor is some of the funniest hum- humor. <laughs> so, uh, you're right. It's in the style of Mario. Yeah. You play this guy named Pole. Oh, pff, it is eight bit too. Master it's... System. Well, I don't know if it's necessarily consistent though, because it has like words that come up on the screen in Japanese, and those don't look eight bit. No, it's uh, Glenn has a good blog post about like what eight bit means, and lots of time modern eight bit games aren't really uh, limited in all the ways that it was on old hardware. But anyway, I wanted to thank Ivan L. He's in the Nintendo Voice Chat Facebook group that I'm in, and he's the one that finally helped me identify this memory because I was like, "What is thank this game?" You. So I posted. It's like it was in Nintendo Power, Sega, WiiWare. It was supposed to be funny, and I can't remember. Did it ever come out? And he's he's like, here's what it is. Only came out in Japan. So, thank goodness. So it was received well yeah. on release, um, and it was actually one of Sega's best-selling WiiWare titles. Wow. So, at, at least in Japan. So it did well. I don't know why we never really heard of it, but yeah, maybe that's just because the only WiiWare games that we ever heard of were. Mega Man 9 and 10. <laughs> we would love to show you some footage. Uh, we can show you Donkey Kong footage if you'd like. But um, <laughs> this game's not necessarily safe to show. Appar- yeah. Apparently it's got some crude humor. Um, so you'll have to just take our word for it. You can look it up on your own if you'd like to. But Pole is a cowboy. He needs to rescue his girlfriend, Sharon. And <laughs> so it's kind of making fun of... of Mario and Peach and stuff, but there's really what you play this game for is not that it's very long or even a difficult platformer, but it makes fun of platformers and, and there's scenarios. There's like a hundred funny scenarios you can find. You can get a mushroom where you just grow and you just keep growing and you grow so big that you die. That's great. Uh, you can fall too high and you break your leg and then you have to just waddle around the whole <laughs> yes. level so there's these different easter eggs that you find and even like intentional glitching intentional slowdown happening uh, to make you think that you are playing an old game this sounded so good to me at the time and that's and that was the goal of the game is there's a hundred of them and you have to find all 100 yeah. and some of them you even have to um play through a second time to yeah. find and also um from what I've read, is there's not even like save states, so you sit down and you play through it, and you have to play through it all yeah. in in one sitting, which I think is cool. That gives you a taste of what we had to go through as kids. <laughs> Are we allowed to read one comment late from our last segment? <laughs> yes. Terry says, "What if Smash for Switch is just a Wii U port, costs seventy dollars, and has <laughs> Funky Kong as a playable character?" <laughs> Take my money! <laughs> that is the best comment today. You, yes. You win, Thierry. Good job. Thank you. So, 
uh, you could say we broke the fourth wall there because we talked about the previous episode and Paul's Big Adventure broke the fourth wall a lot which was Mm -hmm. part of its humor so makes fun of video games makes fun of video gamers it's great it is great it makes fun of Americans too because Paul is like a cowboy and it and all Americans are cowboys and all this (laughs) stuff so I thought I remembered them like with Nintendo Power I thought they were planning a US release right um, but it it never made it any further than Nintendo Power, apparently, in America. Um, because it's super Japanese, and it also got a, um, a Ciro B rating. Ciro, or Ciro, or however it's pronounced, is like the rating system in Japan, kind of like Peggy in ESRB. Um, it's like a T mm. in ESRB. It's like 12 and up. That's not too bad. Which isn't too bad, but since it's super Japanese and has crude humor, they're like, yeah, let's just not localize yeah. it. Yeah, and in Japan, wouldn't they rate something, maybe not necessarily as mature if it has to do with body parts and stuff? Like they're, yeah. they're less sensitive to that kind of thing. I think you're right. Yeah, so it could even have an M in the U.S., we don't know. But we'll never know, and we can't know, and we can't buy the game on Wii anymore because the Wii Shop channel is dead. Wait, we can buy it if we have points. Mm Mm-hmm. And if they're Japanese points, and if we have a Japanese Wii. I don't have any of those things. (laughs) So if you want to ship us a Japanese Wii with this game preloaded on it, you can do that. Yeah. There's probably plenty of good Let's Plays you could watch, though, if you just want to see what the scenarios are like. And I think Sega should do more stuff like this. I think that they should develop little downloadable games for Nintendo platforms. Sonic Mania, that worked out well. Why not other original projects that are spoofs or funny or just little experiments that uh, could go viral or or be very streamable? They're doing those retro games. What's that called? Sega Uh, Ages? Sega Ages. Sega Ages. Sega Ages. You got to put this in the gauges so that we can play it (laughs) thanks for watching thanks for being a part of the crew don't forget to sponsor us on patreon because when you sponsor us on patreon number one Mm -hmm. every dollar that you donate to us goes back into creating this wonderful set no it goes back into um, making content for you guys and also it's like a crescent moon today The, the shadow yeah the light and stuff it's, it's bizarre <laughs> um, and also you get you get exclusive content mm. uh, and a huge backlog of exclusive content it doesn't just start you know with the stuff that you get when you become a patron no there's how many episodes of the Patreon show do we have we have like dozens and dozens yeah. of episodes of the Patreon show that you are missing out on um, they're good to go back and watch, too, because it's us being goofy. Get it. Yeah. Binge it. Get enjoy it. it. Good. Get it, got it, good is some sort of slogan. Of yes. It. Get it, binge it, good. Yep. Get it, binge it, good. So. See you guys next time. Signing out.